truly he is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. If you come out to worship this morning, let's just raise up on our feet and give our Lord a and say the mighty hand praise for truly he is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. To the saints in the sanctuary, to those who are streaming live on Facebook, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. Praise God. We're going to have our scripture reading. Our scripture reading will be coming from the book of Romans. We're going to ask all those who have their Bibles turn to the 12th chapter in the book of Romans. Amen. In the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, I will be reading verse 1, 2, and 3. And the reason is wise. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, yes. holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, Thank you, Lord. but to think soberly, yes. according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Please thank and praise God for three verses in the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, and may God have blessed the reading of your mind. Let the church say amen. 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 It's time to give the praise team. Praise the Lord. Can we give the Lord another hand praise on this morning? Truly, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. We thank the Lord for being assembled together one more time just to give him some glory and some worship and exalt his name. Come on, join with us in the worship. We come to praise a worthy God on this morning. Join with us. Kingdom. 
good. He's been better than good. thank God for his mercy and his kindness. We're going to pray and we're going to ask you to stand with us as we look to the Lord. Glory be to God. It is good to praise God. It is good to honor the Lord. Yes. Some folk don't want you to praise God, but you give God the glory. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray. We're going to ask everyone to stand as we look to the Lord. We need God in this hour. We need God every hour. And without him, we can do absolutely nothing. And so we need to come back and be the one leper to give God thanks. So let us look to the Lord. Let us stand. Father, we thank you this morning. We do give you thanks. We do give you honor. We do give you praise. Because you said no glory will you give to another. And we give you all of the attention, all of the glory, all of the honor, all of the praise. For the time will come when your glory shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. We thank you, Lord God, for how you've brought us this far, for certainly you've been better to us than we have been to ourselves. You not only saved us from the hand of the enemy, but you've delivered us even from our own self. You delivered us from self-destruction. Glory be to God. You delivered us, Lord God, from drowning. You delivered us from depression. You've delivered us from self-sabotagement. We give you glory this morning. We give you honor and praise. You delivered us from self-pride. You've delivered us, Lord God, from thinking high-mindedly. We give you honor, glory, and praise because there's no other God in heaven. Glory to God but thee. Who do we have in heaven but you, Lord? And there is none that we desire more on the earth. We thank you for your mercies being renewed this morning. We thank you for how you've given us a mind to come into your house to give you glory in the name of Jesus without reserve. We thank you, Lord God, for hallelujah, how you filled us with the gift of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for cleansing us and washing us in the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God, for how you revealed unto us that truth. Oh, God, we thank you so much because you could have left us out in the world, but yet you grafted us in out of the wild olive branch into the olive branch. 
And so we honor you this morning. We bless you, Lord God. We ask and pray that you would, Lord God, begin to move as you already have in the remaining of the service. Bless those that are here in the house as well as those that are home. I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ that you would heal, Lord God, someone at home or even here in the house. There are many sicknesses today, but God, you're still able to stretch forth your hand. You're still able to pour out your healing virtue in the name of the Lord. For Lord God, you told us in your word, Lord God, that by your stripes, we are healed. I ask you to heal somebody. Let your stripes, Lord God, mend somebody's wounds. Let your stripes heal somebody internally. Let your stripes, Lord God, go inside that vessel and begin to renew that flesh, renew their strength. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord God, because you're still a miracle worker. Oh, yes, you are. Hey, God, when the world and the enemy said no, you said yes. And so we give you honor and glory for that. We ask and pray that you would bless those that are hungry, that you would feed them. Bless those that are, ho are homeless, that they find shelter. Bless our brothers and sisters in the jailhouses and in the prisons. Oh God, let your spirit and your word reach them there. In the name of Jesus, let that man or that woman that is in that jail cell repent of their sins and be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Even Lord God in that six by six jailhouse, that cell room, let your Holy Ghost fall upon them in the name of the Lord. Hey, glory to God. Bless Lord God the musicians. Bless Lord God the praise team. Remember the man of the Lord, man of God as he comes to deliver your word. Let your word be the height of the service. Let your word be the greatest interest. Let your word, Lord God, fall on good ground today. Let it permeate the heart and minds of men, women, and children. Let someone repent in the name of the Lord. Let them be pricked in their hearts. Glory be to God. Men's heart, men's wounds. Touch their hearts, Lord God. Create in us a clean heart and renew within us a right spirit. Oh, we pray that you give us the soundness in our mind that we may receive the engrafted word of the Lord. We thank you. We give you glory and honor and praise. It's because of you we live, move, and we have our being. And so forever we will honor you. Forever we will praise you. Forever, Lord God, we will give you thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. These blessings and many others, in the name of the Lord we ask and pray, it's in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody give God some glory. Somebody give God some praise. God bless you. Receive ye the praise.
I want to always worship you, Lord. No matter what I'm going through, in the good times, in the bad times, when I don't feel like it, I'm going to make myself worship because he's deserving of all the glory. And he's so deserving of all the honor. How many know he's so worthy? I can't say it enough. That's right. I can't say it enough how good he's been. I can't say it enough how much I love him. Lord, I love you. On this morning, you're so worthy. We do this for him. It's not for entertainment. But we come to give him some glory. Because he's so worthy. This last song just says, God said he'll be with me. I don't care what you're going through. These are some trying times. But he's with us. God said he would be with me. God said he would be with me. Come on, put your hands together. God said he would be with me. 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 He'll be with me. God said he would be with me. Said he'll be with me. God said he would be with me. He'll be with me. God said he would be with me. I don't have to worry. God said he would be with me. Said he'll be with me. God said he would be with me. He'll be with me. God said he would be with me. He'll be with me. God said he would be with me.
going keep the praises going as we turn it over to the man of Put our hands together. If you know the Lord is with you. If you know the Lord is with you, put those hands together. If you know the Lord is with you, open up your mouth and say thank you. If you know the Lord is with you, shout glory in this place. If you thank God for Jesus, shout hallelujah. said he would be with me. He said he would be with me. God said, God said, God said he would be with me. Through the storm, through the pain, through sickness, through the rain, God said, Woo. he would be with me. I think I heard him say, I will never leave you, and I will never for, but lo, I am with you. How long? Come on, shout it out. How long? Shout it out. How long? Shout out always, always. to tell that devil God is with me right now. You took your best shot and he's still with me. That's why I'm still standing. Oh, shot. That's why I'm still standing. When my enemies came up to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they, yeah, God said he would. Be with me. Hold on, old soldiers. You have no need. Thank you. Thank you, sis. You have no need to fight in this battle. Glory be to God. Thank you. I just felt that one in my I just felt that one in my ankle bone. Glory be to God. I have no need to fight in this battle. But I must stand still and do what? I'm gonna see something. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! I feel like you, Sister Ricks. Hey! Glory be to God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! 
standing on the promises of God. Mm. You know, some people want to see you fail. Some people look to see you fail. Sometimes you can hear them say, here it comes. It's about to happen now. It ain't going to be long. It's about to take place. And God will give you another second win. Glory be to God. And you keep right on ticking. When they thought you was going to die, you kept on living. Hey! Glory be to God. I resurrected like Jesus. I got up. Hallelujah. didn't take me out it just made me stronger hallelujah psalms 84 by the grace of god we do honor our wonderful savior and lord amen his name is jesus the christ the anointed one amen we thank god for him we appreciate amen life health and strength that he gives unto us the ability to get up every morning, to see, amen, the sunshine, to feel the cold breeze in the morning. We thank God, praise the Lord, that he's given us the ability and the sense to know that the weather, praise the Lord, when you can feel the degrees go up from 29 to 32 and 32 to 37, you can feel the difference it takes your faculties and your mind to be working to know that these things are taking place. I thank God for what we consider the simple things in life. Sometimes we don't acknowledge him in every way, but certainly he is a beautiful and awesome God. Can we give our Savior a great round of applause? thank God for life, health, and strength. Amen. Don't worry. You don't have to keep looking at your clock. Well, we'll get you out of here. You'll be able to see the Ravens game on today in Jesus' name. But we come to worship right now. Bless the name of Jesus. I'll see Lamar in a little bit, but we come to, we come to give God praise and come to give him some glory because our God is worthy to be lifted. We definitely, before we move any further, we want to acknowledge our wonderful man of God. We want to say amen. We salute you, Bishop James B. Thornton. We thank God for you. How beautiful are the feet of them that bring glad tidings. Amen. We thank God. Can we celebrate? Amen. One of the greatest servants that lives. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for you. In Jesus' name, and to his wonderful wife, God bless her in Jesus' name. We thank God for you in the name of the Lord. And to Elder Travis, amen, we salute him. And to his beautiful wife, amen. Twinkie Clark, God bless you, Twinkie. Amen. To this wonderful host of deacons, amen, servants of the Most High God. To their wives, we salute you all. In Jesus' precious name, and to my wife, Lady Thornton, God bless you, honey. Thank God for her in the name of Jesus. To all of God's precious, precious people, it is good to see you. It is good to be alive. To all of those that are viewing at home, amen. We thank God for you. We appreciate you, amen. If you're coming in on the chat, Praise the Lord. I ask you to share this content in the name of the Lord. Uh, we look to hear from God on this Lord's morning. Psalms 84. Amen. Do you have that? Psalms 84, by the grace of God. We're going to look at a few passages of Scripture. Pray with me. I want to look at verse number, well, let's, look, let's begin at verse number one. And by the grace of God, here we go. 
How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found an house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord, of hosts my king and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will still, they will be still praising thee, Selah. And by the grace of God, uh, we're going to talk from verse number four. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee. For the next few minutes, and by the grace of God, amen, as he lead us, we're going to talk on the subject this Lord's morning. I will still be worshiping. I will still be worshiping. Father, we thank you even now and we ask you that you would loosen my tongue and give me clarity of thought. Pray, Lord, that you would allow your voice to be heard and allow there to be clarity of speech and distinction that your voice may be heard without any confusion. We pray even now that you would allow your beautiful and awesome word to fall on good ground. We pray for inspiration. We pray for the anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. We pray even now, glory be to God, that you would loosen your people from many, glory be to God, un familiar spirit. We pray, Lord God, that you would rebuke every handiwork of the enemy. Pray, God, even now that you would allow your word to move in and throughout these aisles and, oh God, saturate this place with your word. Glory be to God. Let someone get one thing, let another get something else, but God, fill the baskets fill the baskets don't let us go home empty don't let us go home the same way we came in somebody may have come in broken in despair but today i beg of you that you would allow your precious people to not go home broken but to leave here feeling like the wounds has been binded together that they are have a healing agent called the bomb and since you are still the great deliverer that you are we are trusting glory to your name that you have already made a way thank you for all of your ways are perfect all of your ways are holy you are righteous glory hallelujah yes you are speak lord and thy servants shall hear it's in jesus name we pray and all of the house shall glory one time god bless you you may be seated in the presence of an almighty god i will still be worshiping i will still be worshiping i will still be worshiping Precious people of God, all psalms that were written were not always written from our beautiful brother, David himself. However, when you look at the psalms, we must understand that they are within themselves many times noted as poetry. And when you really take time just to go through it, you will find the beauty of the psalm because people really, when they write the psalms, they are speaking from life experiences. It is an awesome thing to me that when we have the ability to tell somebody about 
our story, for somebody to hear how we have overcome by the blood of the Lamb according to revelations and by the word of their testimonies. It is important that the believer holds on to their testimony. And even though, even though we may go through like our contested brother by the name of Job, when the enemy came to come against him, but before Job took any of his testimonies back, Job decided he would add more to it. And I want to submit and to solicit to my brothers and to my precious sisters that before we take back whatever it is that we have belched out and decreed and declared that it is that we are set to do in 2021, before you take it back, make sure that you add more to it. Regardless of how some days are shining, some days are literally feeling like they are against you. Some days don't always feel good, but as I told one of my dear brothers close to me, I told him that even though it's a rough day, it still is a good day. Yeah, I believe it was it was the rapper, I believe it was Ice Cube. He sung a rap song which says, today is a good day. And I want somebody to know that regardless of what it feels like, and I'm talking from the emotional aspect of what it feels like, regardless of what it feels like, don't get caught up in the emotional aspects of what you feel but you and I have the ability to turn that thing around by speaking positive words. The more we know of God through his word, the more he has the ability to speak to us. The Bible declares that he will bring all things back to our remembrance. I'm getting to my text. I'm working on my ground job. Uh, it is important that the more we study God's word, the more we can hear from him. Because his word, not the prophet, his word, not the prophetess, but his word is a more sure prophecy. His word cannot be altered, but man can get things twisted up. Did God really say that? Did he? Did he? Did he? I'm not sure. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. But I thought I heard this. This is what I heard. There's confusion sometimes. Praise the Lord. But this is why it is encumbered upon all of us that we fulfill the scripture when it says study. 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 To show thyself approved a workman yeah a workman just just look at somebody around you you that are in the chat just type in I am a workman you that are in the temple just look over in somebody I am a workman that's who I am you're a woman you still are workmen you are a worker we are to be a workman with needeth not to be ashamed in other words nobody can just run up on you any kind of a way and twist scriptures and tell you anything about your God and tell you that you don't no longer have to do that that's antiquated that's obsolete that's deleted years ago you don't have to no longer do that but I need to do whatever God told me I need to do and if it was good for my ancestors I believe that is probably still good for us today and I really want to tell you 100% sure it's really good for us today if we can read it the scripture says line upon line and precept upon precept here a little and there a little. It is here, precious people of the most high God, that this particular text here in Psalms 84 was written. 
praise the Lord, uh, it was a psalm to the sons of Korah. It was a psalm to the sons of Korah. Now, people will say when it comes to their mind, Korah, Korah. Korah sounds familiar, it does, and it will ring a bell. But when you look scripturally, Korah was noted about four different times in four different passages. So you have to know which Korah you're talking about. It's just like Lazarus. When Lazarus was not the only Lazarus, but when we hear Lazarus, we're thinking of Lazarus related to Mary and Martha because that's what rings a bell. But Lazarus was not the only Lazarus, but when God went to the tomb to speak to Lazarus he knew exactly who he was talking to so the other Lazarus did not get up it was the only one that he was speaking directly to I love it because I'm not the only Lawrence you're not the only David you're not the only Michelle you're not the only Michael but when God wants to speak to Michael you when God wants to speak to Lawrence me when God wants to speak to Michelle you he knows exactly who he he's talking to. He's God alone all by himself. He's got our address. He has our zip code. He's got our DNA. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And you didn't have to get tested. Hallelujah. He even has already counted the hairs that are upon your head before you were ever born. I know you lost some already, but he still knows how many hairs you have on your head right now because he's God alone. Praise the Lord. And so he writes, he allows this psalm to be written to the sons of Korah. Now, the sons of Korah, praise the Lord, were, yes, indeed, the same ones that we were are familiar with with in Numbers chapter number 16. In Numbers 16 and verses 1 through 3 roughly, it begins to give us the exposure of what was taking place with this family, hallelujah, that stemmed out from Korah, but that was then and this is now, but I want to give you some history of where we got started. The Bible says in Numbers 16, it begins to tell us in verse number one, that this Korah, hallelujah, one of the sons of Peleth, the sons of Reuben, he took men and they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel. The Bible says 250 princes of the assembly, hear this, famous in the congregation. They were renowned, men of renown, the Bible says says, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, you take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation is holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. And when Moses heard it, the Bible says he fell upon his face face he begins to speak to Korah and gives him a dilemma hallelujah he then begins to tell him in a nutshell as I try to skedaddle along here that if 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 I'm not God's anointed if I'm not the chosen one that God has placed over this assembly he says then then if I am you will not die an ordinary death Hallelujah. He challenged him. He challenged him and not only him, it sounds just like the devil himself that would gather a host of the people in the congregation of heaven and got a third of the angels to tag team along with him. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I thought I would share with you on God's great morning that that same spirit is still alive. And that spirit, that spirit of cantankerous spirit, that spirit of division, I'm coming through this morning. Satan, watch out because I'm coming through in the name of the Lord. That spirit of back. Fighting, that spirit of hatred, that spirit of division, that spirit of 
biting and devouring and tearing up the team. If you devour the whole team, who in the world is going to play the game? If I'm the center and you're the point guard and someone else is the forward and you devour and bite the whole team, who is going to win the game? We can't play together. That's why the Holy Ghost can't come until everybody is in one place on one accord. We need unity. We need togetherness. Hallelujah to God. That's how a good marriage works. It's not that they always see everything eye to eye, but if there is no unity, if there's a consistent dissension, then there is division. When there's division, there's no longer a single home. You can be in a single family house, but have a divided house and have many houses within the one house well ladies and gentlemen it is here now that the house was divided he went and got Korah 250 men princes the Bible says he got people that were famous in the congregation you had to know that he was whispering and talking behind Moses and Aaron back they were back and they were listening and giving ear. I want to tell somebody, stop giving ear to the devil. Don't you dare give ear to the enemy. I don't care if it sounds good. Uh, you do know that sometimes the devil will speak through our loved ones. I'm talking good this morning. The devil will speak through our loved ones. Come here, Job. He can testify. Even his wife, even after she got frustrated. Uh, hallelujah. She didn't understand. I can understand her perspective. She lost her babies, but they were his babies too. Hallelujah. And he had to understand that not only do we receive good from God, but we've got to be able to take the bad as well. Hallelujah. There's no job that you can get on the face of this earth that everything you're going to get your way. No, you got to be able to take the good along with the bad hallelujah that's just in life that's just in every aspect of life I don't care take it from church to Capitol Hill you are gonna have to learn to take the good with the bad look at somebody and tell them be strong in this season Ah, yeah, and so they gathered themselves together against him. This is the Korah and the 250 princes, renowned men, gathered themselves together. Hallelujah. But then God revealed himself through Moses. Moses prayed. Aaron prayed. And God revealed himself. God opened up the earth. Hallelujah. And swallowed them up whole. Yeah. Yeah, whole men, hallelujah, 251 of them rascals, 250 princes, but don't you forget Korah, hallelujah, swallowed them up whole while they were yet still alive. The earth closed back up, hallelujah. Woo! God, oh, Shayama, you want to be careful. I've got to move from here. This ain't even my text, but I got to tell it. You want to be careful of how you come against the servants of the most high God. You want to be careful how you come against God chosen people. How you come against the anointing of God. He says be careful of how you treat my anointed and do my prophet no harm. You want to be careful and that is not just the pastors and the preachers. God respects his chosen generation. God respects his little children and you would do better the Bible says to hang yourself with a mill around your neck than offend one of his children. Hallelujah. You want to be careful of how you handle me. Tell somebody, uh, be careful of how you handle me. You don't want to go around talking bad about me and whispering foolishness and nonsense.
conscience behind your brothers and sisters back the best thing for us to do is to pray for them don't even talk about them just pray for them say God have your way whatever you do it's all right with me but I ain't gonna get in the way hallelujah because when the rotisserie comes around I want God to have mercy on me hallelujah and I want God to remember me because I extended mercy to somebody else that sometimes maybe didn't even deserve it hallelujah ah God just just shout mercy mercy Mm, mercy, mercy me, hallelujah. Ah, and so bless the name of Jesus. He says here that they were devoured. Now this was Korah, but you must understand that Korah also is an extension of the family of Kohath, or the extension of the Kohathites. Mm -hmm. And the Kohathites, or Kohath, if you meet me in Numbers chapter 3, I want to give a little history so we can understand how we even got to what we're talking about, so we can discuss how amiable are the tabernacles of the Lord of hosts. He says in Numbers chapter number 3, he says, and of Kohath, hallelujah, verse number 27, he says, he says, and this was of the families of the Kohathites. I'm in the latter portion of 27 going into 28. And the number of the male from the month old and upward were 8,600 8, keeping the charge of the sanctuary. Uh -huh. The families of the sons of Kohath shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle southward and the chief of the house of the father of the families of the Kohathites shall be Elizaphon uh, 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 and the sons of Uziel. He says, and their charge, here it is, and their charge shall be the ark and their charge shall not only be the ark but the table and the candlestick and the altars and the vessels of the sanctuary wherewith they minister and the hanging and all the service thereof but in verse 2 and we'll close from here that Aaron the priest shall be chief over them of the Levites they had the oversight and the charge of the sanctuary so these Kohathites or Korah or the sons of Korah were responsible to govern the things that were consisted in the sanctuary hallelujah the candlestick the tables hallelujah the house of worship the house of worship was dear and near unto their hearts. So they gave themselves to the things of God, hallelujah, so that they could minister before the people of God because their job, hallelujah, required, hallelujah, for them to give themselves to it. Their jobs is not just something that you just randomly just run in here and think that you're just going to jump up before people Ah, hallelujah and that you're going to serve it don't work like that I need you to hear me for every musician for every singer for every true keeper of the house of worship when you give yourself to the things of God and you ask God in prayer to anoint me unto your ministry unto your service for the servitude of your people you can't take that lightly because God hears us and when God blesses us with the gift or with the talent which is to go back unto him and he is to get all the glory and all the credit we've got to give ourselves wholly unto the things of God. That means you've got to live a different lifestyle. That means, brothers and sisters, you can't smoke marijuana. That means, brothers and sisters, you can't be drinking liquor and think that you can be a drunk and come in here and worship and think that your worship is going to be effective. No, you can't be a drunk. You can't smoke marijuana. You can't be, hallelujah, running around, hallelujah, with half the church and think 
think that your ministry is going to have an exclamation mark of glory written on it. The anointing don't come haphazardly. The anointing comes when you chase after God. I know some people, now some people will say, well, they're anointed, they're anointed, and they live a half life. They don't even really live for God. No, that's not necessarily the anointing, but they are gifted. Yes, there's a difference. Don't you ever get it dis, dis, uh, uh, disarrayed with there's a difference between anointing and being gifted. There's a whole lot of folks that are gifted with talents. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says uh, gifts, uh, gifts and talents are without repentance. Hallelujah. When God gives you gifts and when God blesses us. Hallelujah. It's without repentance. God don't have to repent when he gives you something. It's up to us to do the right thing with it. But you've got to, you got to remember that when God blesses you with the gift, when God blesses you with a talent, you want to seek God holistically so that you're not just gifted, but you want to be anointed with the gift hallelujah and then when you get the gift you got to be able to serve him in the beauty of holiness come on Chad Thornton talk you got to be able to hold your flesh down you got to be able to submit to the things of God because the enemy wants to come in to steal to kill and to destroy hallelujah and if he can get us off of our base if he can take us and move us then the song or the worship that you are supposed to be leading you won't have that effect and God does use music just like he used David to move on the man of God saw when he had an evil spirit and when David would begin to play hallelujah but if David's spirit wasn't right that spirit that was on Saul would have never Never left. Uh, let me tell you, deliverance don't come just from being talented, uh, but deliverance will come from the anointing. Hey, glory be to God. Uh, help me, Holy Ghost. It comes, chains are broken. That's why the Bible said, uh, hallelujah, in the old book, the Bible says it's the anointing, uh, hallelujah, that will destroy the yoke, hallelujah. It's the anointing that makes the difference, uh, hallelujah. You can take uh, a homeless man, and if God takes a homeless man and put the anointing on him, you and I could be in the church for 20 years but God I had that homeless man walk in with the anointing and quote three scriptures we quoting 30 and still ain't did nothing he'll quote three and shake the house loose because he got a testimony of where he comes from then I want to tell you you can't live any kind of old raggedy life hallelujah I can talk from experience I know what I'm talking about when I talk this you can't live any kind of old raggedy hallelujah life claiming to be anointed by God because the gift will bring you before great men but the gift is not what's going to keep you there it's going to be integrity that's going to hold you in the room hallelujah gifts will bring you hallelujah before great men hallelujah ah your gift will make room for you but your gift don't keep you in the room tell somebody uh, you at home watch and type it in I I need the anointing hallelujah it's not just based on my gift don't you ever declare and decree in your heart that this gift is going to take me somewhere no you need the anointing to go before the gift hallelujah because a gift is one thing hallelujah oh god you got to remember he says my glory shall i not give to another so god ain't just handing out bags of anointing to everybody for any old thing he ain't God ain't giving out goodie bags of anointing no gifts come a dime a dozen but everybody ain't anointed with the gift I need the gift and I want the anointing shout glory in this place shout glory two times hallelujah 
Hallelujah. It's here. It's here. It's here. Help me, Holy Ghost. It's here. Hallelujah. That uh, ah, that they uh, ah, discovered who they were. Hallelujah. And God begins to speak to them. And uh, I'm not even going to finish this. I'm going to be real with you. But God says to him, he begins to write and move in the ledger. Hallelujah. He begins to tell him in verse number one how amiable are the tabernacles of the Lord of hosts. How amiable are the tabernacles. How lovely. Huh? This word amiable, if you go and look at it in your dictionary, it has about five to six different uh, definitions now that uh, it didn't mean back then. But if you go and look again, you will find out that it will say that this word is obsolete when it talks about this word meaning to mean lovely, beautiful, glorious, hallelujah. He's really saying how glorious, how beautiful are the tabernacles of the Lord of hosts that when I come, hallelujah, into the house of God, there should be the glory of the house of God. That's why the God, the God of our salvation said, uh, he says, bring the meat into, he says, bring the tithe and the offering that there may be meat in my house. God wants his house to be glorious. The house of God should not be broken down. The house of God should not be falling apart. That's why we pay tithe. That's why we pay offering so that the house of God can have heat in the winter. The house of God can have cool air condition in the summer. We can sit on some cushions. The musicians got the right stuff to play. Hallelujah. The keys ain't all jacked up. What in the world are you doing with the tithe and the offering? If the bathrooms, I can't even go in the bathrooms without them having a stench. There ain't nothing new nowhere but the pastor riding around in a brand new S550 SLL class. Hallelujah. Sitting on 22 inch chrome wheels. I dare you. Hallelujah. We got to live, but we got to make sure that the house of God comes first. Ah, yeah. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And so he says, he says, my soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. Here it is. My soul. Ah, yeah, shah, yeah. My soul. Oh, shit, hey. My soul longeth. I'm trying to hold myself together. Y'all pray for me. My soul longeth. Hallelujah. I feel like running. My soul longeth. Yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. Hear this. He says, my soul fainteth for the courts. Now, you got to remember that there was the outer court, the inner court, and the holies of holy. Holies, outer court, inner court, holies of holies. Now he's only talking about the courts. I just want to be able to be in the courts. Well, because if I can get into the courts, not only am I in the courts, ah, but there is fellowship. Hallelujah. How beautiful it is, the Bible says, for brethren to dwell together. That's why every time I see you, I say it's so good to see you. Hallelujah. And what you ought to say, it's good to see see you too. Hallelujah. I don't want to hear nobody say to me, uh, when I say how it's good to see you, uh, it's good to be seen. No, this ain't no funeral. Uh, hallelujah. I ain't viewing you. Uh, it's good to see you because it's good to fellowship with you. Hallelujah. And that's why uh, hallelujah, when we come together uh, the devil gets mad and that's why the devil wants to bring division in amongst us uh, because he don't want us to be unified hallelujah but when we are together hallelujah we put the devil on the run for one shall chase a thousand and two shall put ten thousand to flight I wonder what would happen when we put three together but I tell you what happened when they had a hundred and twenty in the upper room and suddenly Suddenly, when you and I get together on one accord, 
suddenly uh, folks are dropped uh, folks are dropped uh, they'll drop the, uh, they'll drop their uh, uh, stuff down uh, and they'll be healed uh, in the name of Jesus uh, suddenly uh, you'll see canes uh, falling by the wayside suddenly uh, you'll see 95 year old men that was blind in one eye beginning to squint and see suddenly uh, when you and I are together uh, tuberculosis got to take a back seat uh, suddenly uh, when we get together uh, and when we pray uh, Deacon Phil's mother uh, will walk through that church uh, hallelujah I believe in the power of God I'm looking for a sudden moment uh, in the ministry. Uh, I don't want to just gather together uh, just to view somebody. Uh, I want to come together uh, and fellowship uh, and get into one place uh, and suddenly uh, there'll be a shift in the atmosphere. Uh, that's why uh, when you come to worship uh, don't look to be served uh, but look to jump in the praise. Uh, look to jump in the worship. Uh, praise and team uh, you got to be ready. Uh, Music you got to be ready before anybody else is ready so I pray for you I pray not just the gift I pray not just for the talent but I pray for the anointing to be on your life that God will use you to help to run the spirits of the demonic forces up out of here we need deliverance and I want to come together in a greater fashion that when we pray uh, and when we fast uh, that God uh, will not just move uh, but God uh, will open up the windows of heaven uh, and pour out a blessing uh, that I won't have room uh, enough to receive uh, that the power uh, of the Holy Ghost uh, will overtake somebody uh, and move on somebody uh, that same person uh, that used to be a devil uh, all of a sudden they're talking about praise the Lord bless the name of Jesus God is good bless him give him glory I'm talking about a shift I'm talking about a culture shock I'm talking about the power of God that when we got the anointing but we got to live something we got to walk a ride when he walk a ride he will not withhold any good thing from them that walk a ride. Sad glory. Sad glory. Sad glory. The power. Sad glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't finish this. But he says here now, now, he says even the altars, hallelujah to God, all the host, but bless are they that dwell in thy house. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not talking about if you come during COVID season. I ain't talking about that. But I'm talking about the house of God is in your heart. There are some of you that got to stay home. You got underlying issues. That's all right. I love you. But God knows what's in your heart. You ain't using no excuse. It's in your heart. But I want to tell you that the scripture says, blessed are they that dwell in the house. You got to stay in the ship. There's safety in the ship. That's what Paul was talking about when he was on the ship and there was no stars and no moon for many days it was dark it was bleak out there he couldn't see nothing the people on the ship they became frantic they about to lose everything they begin to loosen the tackle and throw the weight off the ship but God came down and spoke to the apostle Paul he says listen here Paul Tell the people uh, to abide in the ship. Stay in the ship. There's a lot of chaos going on around you. I know the waters are troubled. I know the storm is out on the ocean and it's moving this away. But my soul 
is anchored in Jesus. He will have his way. I'm going to stay in the ship. That's what I come to tell somebody. I'm going to still be worshiping him. I'm not worshiping him on the outside. My heart is in the house. My heart is in the things of God. I love the word. I love worship. I fell a time or two or three or four but God picked me back up for a just man will fall seven times but the Lord but the Lord but the Lord will lift him back up you'll get back up I need you to tell somebody just wave at somebody tell them get up get up get up from there get up from depression get up from oppression get up from that sickness get up from that brain tumor get up get up get up get up God gave you power you got to speak over yourself you got power lay your hands on yourself you got to get that blessed oil and abide in the word of God my mother when I was a young child would go and get the blessed oil and put it on me as a grown man I go and get the blessed oil I put it on my children I bless them in the name of Jesus peradventure they have sinned peradventure they did not repent I say God make a way but I want somebody to know I don't care what the government tries next if they close the buildings I'm still going to be worshiping the Lord because worship my worship transcends the building I worship on Monday I worship on Tuesday I worship on Wednesday I worship on Thursday I come back on Friday and I give them worship I get up on Saturday Lord and greatly to be praised great is the Lord of the most high hallelujah to God lift up your heads oh ye people come on Zion give God praise and give God glory I must still be praising him that's why the man said when I passed through the valley of Baca my tears filled the ditches I was in a low place but God pick me up that's why the next verse says in verse number seven he says elder Travis we go from strength to strength we go from trial to trial from faith to faith here a little there a little I've been down I've been out I've been sick I've been wounded I've been talked about I've been ridiculed I've been left behind I was a nobody but God he chose me he loved me with the everlasting love but look at you now God's hand is on you look at you now you got the grace of God look at your family your family's more blessed because of you keep your hand in God's hands and when this thing shifts keep on praising them stay in the ship stay in the ship Paul said no life would be lost but you gotta stay in the ship some of you trying to follow your families stop following your family trends because some of your families they're just haters I got to tell you just like it is some of your family members they are haters and haters of God they don't really believe they don't really love God but you're following the traditions of your family so what your mama says some stupid stuff on Facebook stop following your mama follow Jesus I lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help my help I got the clothes 
I got to close. But I will still be praising him regardless. You say, well, Bishop, that's a bold statement. I know. I believe it. You can't say it unless you feel it in your spirit. And listen, this ain't a shot at nobody. If you're not that bold in your spirit yet, I pray with you even now that you garner some boldness because then shall you know as you follow on to know. But I want to submit to you, stay with God. Stay with what God said. Whatever the Bible says, stay with what God said. I don't care of the trends of the world, but what I'm noticing now is not just the trends of the world. They're trying to bring this trendy foolishness into the church of God. God, hallelujah. Somebody asked me, uh, Bishop, are you okay? Because they heard me preach strong. They heard me preach hard. I said, I'm okay. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm just stepping it up. And God will reveal who is on board. I know some people are hanging by a thread and a needle, but that's all right. I believe by the grace of God, God's going to take that thread and needle and weave you together. You're going to be okay. You're in the hand of God, but you got to follow God and not your family. A family will run everything down. You doing good until you start following your family. I don't care. I don't care if my sons lose their mind and say, I'm going to go be a Muslim. You go ahead and be a Muslim. When you come back, I'm going to still be hollering. There's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God above all, through you all, and in you all. I ain't going to be no Muslim. I'm going to be a Jesus only. So, so, I'm not here for popularity. That's why I don't try to brand myself. I don't try to brand myself and put pictures of myself out there because I'm trying to get somewhere. No, only place I'm trying to get to is the kingdom of heaven. And there's a few folks that will listen, then they will follow. But I want to tell you, if you're not going to follow, you need to find somewhere you will follow. And that's harsh and that's bold, but if you're not going to follow the doctrine, find somewhere. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Find somewhere that you can follow and that suits you. And I pray you work out well. I pray it goes well with you. Praise the Lord. Sometimes it comes a division, a separation. Paul said it. But then later on in life, Paul knew that John was valuable for the ministry. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. The Lord is not, he is not slack concerning his promises. God's going to fix everything. Be encouraged. Just, just tell somebody, be encouraged. But as for me and my house, I'm still going to worship. I'm still going to give God glory. I'm still going to give God praise. I'm still going to lift him up. There is nothing now that I can possibly see that should just stop us from giving God worship. Oh, well, they're going to they're gonna behead you. They're going to cut your head off. Well, I'm going to worship until they do. Well, you may have to go on the chopping block for Jesus. I know I don't see the chopping block right now, but let me tell you something. If that's all they're going to do, then they might as well bring that on because that's a quick death. That's a painless death. Praise the Lord, somebody. That's better than cancer. Cancer slowly kills you. You behead me, that's a quick death. Give it to me. But I'm going to be still shouting glory as that thing is coming down. Yeah, Baba see. Because he's worthy. God is worthy. Now somebody say, well, you just talking under the anointing. No. I'm talking something that I talk every day. 
my wife hears me, I said, my mind is fixed. My heart is made up. This is not just something that I'm trying to do publicly for you. Because you know what? I can't impress you. I don't impress you. You know how I know I don't impress you? You have heard me enough years to know I don't impress you no more. You ain't going to get nothing else out of me. So if you don't want truth, then you don't want me. So I'm not here to impress. I'm only here to encourage. But I've made my declaration. This is for me. I must be saved. I no longer want to be saved. I must be saved. And so whoever's riding along, let's ride. If you're not, that's understandable. But we pray that you can be like Heinz and that you can catch up one day or another. God bless you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May God give you peace. We're going to the throne of grace. Will you stand with us? In the name of Jesus, God is faithful. God is good. I did not get even halfway through, but I believe in my heart that God has said all he has wanted to say through me today. I believe it. Will you pray with me? Let's pray together. If you're here with someone, if you're here with someone, if you come with someone, I want you to take them by the hand. If you're here with someone, take them by the hand. We're going to pray together. Our families need strength. Our society needs help. Our world is dying. And it's dying from the inside. That's just how cancer works. Cancer kills from the inside. Before you know it, even though on the outside you look like one way, but on the inside you are deteriorating. Don't let the enemy be cancerous in your life. We want to pray for this dying world. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. It's us, your children. You know our voices. Lord God, we call on you. We seek your face. You know all of us, name by name, one by one. Thank you today for your great grace and your love that you have granted unto us. And today, Lord, with clarity of speech, we ask you to forgive us of all of our sins. Blot out our iniquities. Remember them no more. Throw them into the depth of the sea. We beg of you even now that you would keep us and preserve us unto your glory. Save us from this untoward generation. Save us from this dying world. Save us from the calamity that is in the earth. Save us. For the day of our calamity, you are our stay. You are the only encouragement. You are our battle axe. You are our fortress. You are our shield and butler. You are our God. Thank you. Thank you for looking upon us and keeping us. We pray even now for your people, Lord. We pray for our government. We pray, Lord, hallelujah, for every party in the name of Jesus. We pray for protection. We pray in the name of the Lord that you would bless somebody to cease from racism. We pray, oh God, that you would bless, hallelujah, the force, that you would bless the society, that you would bless, Lord God, every police officer. We pray that you would bless, oh God, hallelujah. You told us to pray, oh God, according to Romans, to those that are in authority. We pray, oh God, for even President Donald Trump. We pray for our elected president that is to come in. We pray, oh God, for Vice President Pence, Lord God. We pray, oh God, hallelujah, oh God, for our new vice president coming in. We pray in the name of Jesus for every governor. We pray for Larry Hogan, even now in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, for our new mayor of Baltimore City. 
Brandon Scott, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would give him wisdom and give him understanding even though he's young. But God, if you guide him, if you lead him, if you strengthen him, it's not about his age. You will give him wisdom beyond his years. And so I ask you, Lord God, that you would bless in the name of Jesus, that you would help us to arise in this hour, that you would give us wisdom as we go forward. Bless us, oh God, hallelujah, as a people, not just as a black people, not just as a white people, not just as Africans or Mexicans, hallelujah. Oh God, but we pray, Lord God, to move beyond cultures and move beyond color of skin. We pray, oh God, for people in general. We pray for all of our brothers and sisters because you made out of one blood, you made all men to dwell upon the face of the earth. So Koreans are our brothers and Mexicans are our brothers and sisters. We ask you, Lord God, that you would help this dying world that we can come together in unity and be together protect us protect your people protect us Lord God the church bless our going out and our coming in let no hurt no harm no danger protect us from COVID Freak of us, keep us from the symptoms thereof oh God and if any one of us hallelujah ah God test positive of COVID let it not overtake us while many have died from it God we pray even now now that none of us will die from it. Glory be to God that we would be sustained by your grace, sustained by your love, sustained by your peace. Build us up on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. We pray even now for backsliders, oh God. We pray shy on their seat. We pray, oh God, hallelujah. Ah, we pray for Minister David Rice. We pray, oh God, for your people we pray oh God for deacons that have fell by the wayside we pray oh God for our sisters oh God hallelujah to hold them together we pray in the name of Jesus hallelujah oh we pray oh God for relationships and marriages hallelujah we pray that we will stand on the true word of God that we will not fall by the wayside and alter what the word of God says hallelujah let God be true and every man a liar let the love of God prevail. Let your word have his work. Let your word have free course. In the name of Jesus, move on my brothers and my sisters that don't want to adhere to your word. I pray for grace. I pray for mercy to be upon them. I pray that the love of God that is shed abroad in their hearts by the Holy Ghost that will pull them back in. Pull on us, Jesus. Pull on us, Jesus. Pull on us, Jesus. Pull on us, Jesus. On us, Jesus. Before it's said too late for there's room at the cross still for one save somebody's soul fill somebody with the gift of the Holy Ghost pour it out in the last days according to your word sons and daughters shall prophesy let it be done in the name of Jesus we give you the glory we give you the honor it's in Jesus name now somebody clap your hands like you just got a miracle clap your hands like you just got a breakthrough clap your hands like you know your children are well clap your hands like you just got a brand new job some of y'all ain't clapping your hands like you just got it. I said clap your hands. Clap your hands like you are excited. Clap your hands like you just got the new job. Clap your hands like you got the promotion. Clap your hands like you've been elevated. Clap your hands like you're already delivered. Clap your hands that your daddy is set free. Clap your hands that you got the Holy Ghost. Clap your hands, oh ye people. Clap your hands, oh ye floods. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to sing a portion of this worship, and then we're going to take our offering. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah.
just want to say that I love you more than anything. Ah, sing the song.
spirit in the house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. In the name of the Lord. Amen. We're going to, amen, prepare our hearts for our offertory. In the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you would bless this offering. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, bless every sower. You said in your word that you give seed to the sower. We pray, Lord, you said if we sow bountifully, we shall reap bountifully. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Today, by faith and by your grace, encourage us to sow bountifully. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Our soul says amen and amen. All right. You may be led by the ushers at this time.
we're going to prepare to dismiss, let us all rest upon our feet. Thank God for everything that has taken place thus far. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, as we prepare to depart from your place, never from your presence. We pray that you would lead us and guide us. Bless us to return to our several destinations, safe and sound, no hurt, no harm, no danger. To allow our destinations, oh God, to be found the self-same way we left them, safe and sound. Bless us and keep us. Bless our week on this week to be a tremendous, wonderful, gracious week in you. And a blessed week, oh God, in general. We thank you, oh God, even now. Bless even the children in their virtual learning. We pray, oh God, that you would bless the parents that are dealing with them in the virtual learning, give them the grace of God. We pray, oh God, for even daycares and schools that are open even now, oh God. We pray for private schools that are open. We pray for the strength of all teachers that are teaching them virtually, every faculty member, oh God, uh, vice principals and principals, oh God, and everyone to the office staff, bless as only you can. We'll give you the praise. We'll give you the glory. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we all say amen and amen. God bless you in Jesus' precious name.